Welcome to episode 116 of Sport SA Daily Diary. Today we're chatting to South African BMX rider Nkoba Madida. Good afternoon, Nkoba. How are you? How are you, Adam? Good and you? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, where do we find you at the moment? Um, it's a pleasure. You find me in South Africa at the moment because, uh, yeah, I can't go overseas or anything during this pandemic. So, yeah, I'm still around home, eh? Um, Nkoba, you are a uh, BMX racer for South Africa, um, and we'll get on to that shortly. Um, I believe you started riding a bike from the age of four. Yes, I started riding at the age of four, but I joined BMX. I started riding my bike at the age of four, but I joined BMX in 2011. And uh, tell us, I mean, growing up, did you always enjoy uh, hopping on a bike and uh, scooting all over the place? Yeah, 100%, guy. Um, growing up, I mean, I'm, I'm a boy from the township. So my dad bought me a bike when I was four, and I started riding around. And, uh, you know, um, so riding a bike was something that I loved, I loved a lot. And, yeah, then I, then I you know, I got introduced into BMX when I was still in school, in primary school, Give a Gorge. Um, it's a mountain bike club. So came to my school and then looking for all the riders and talent and stuff. And then, yeah, I was interested. Then I went to Giva and then I loved it. Eh? So this is where I am today. And uh, Jasmine Koba, what is it about uh, BMX that it sort of grabbed your attention and uh, you, you seem to love so much? Um, yeah, you know, it's all, about, it's all about putting yourself out there and, um, you know, talk to people, communicate. Um, and just, you know, work hard and, and put yourself out there. Um, and basically, it's all about training hard and, and doing races and doing well in races, making finals. And, you know, people are looking out there and they will know about you, definitely. And uh, growing up at school, did you uh, participate in any other sports or was it uh, a bike for you and that's about it? Yeah, it was a bike for me. That's about it, hey? Because, uh, yeah, that's... Uh... Oh, sorry. <sighs> yeah. Um... So BMX was something that I fell in love with it, and then I didn't do any other sport. So it was only BMX. So yeah. And um, you had your first trip overseas when I think you were 14 years old. You went to the UCI World Champs in Rotterdam. Um, yes. I mean, that's that's quite something for a, a youngster of, of 14 to hop on a plane and go to Europe and compete internationally. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent, guy. Um, it was it was it was crazy and it was overwhelming and you know talking going overseas as a, as a young man from the township and all that as a young boy it's, it's something big eh? it's something that you will uh, you know not everybody get the chance to you know um to, that opportunity to go overseas and be in the plane so yeah it was it was really amazing and going out there making semi-finals in my festival champs so that was that was big and was that the first time you represented your country yes yes and tell us a bit about that. I mean, from an emotional perspective, I mean, it's quite something for, again, a young 14-year-old, a guy from the townships. Not only is he going overseas for the first time, but he's also representing his country. I mean, it it's, must have been incredibly emotionally special. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a big thing. It was emotional and it was, you know, it was a dream coming true because that's all you need. You know, if you can go out there and participate in also representing your country, that's something big. That's not something small. And um, you know, it brings a lot of attention and, you know, gives you motivation to keep going and even go bigger and start thinking bigger and, uh, and, and work hard, eh? And, uh, I mean, growing up, you, you obviously had Safiso and Schlapo as somebody to, to look up to. Um, is that who you did look up to, sort of growing up in, in your younger years? Or did you have sort of other guys that uh, were sort of role models for you? Um, Sfiso, Sfiso was the guy. Sfiso was my role model because, you know, he was, um, me and him, if you look at in our perspective, he was the guy as, as an upcoming rider. And, you know, of course, we're doing the same sports and he was a good rider. So, you know, I did chat with him on, on, uh, on Instagram and, you know, uh, trying to know him better. And I did meet him in Rotterdam, but we didn't really speak. Um, so yeah, he was, the, he was the main guy that I look up to and I wanted to be him and even better. And you know, that's, so now I'm getting close to that. So now for me, it's all about, um, you know, I still got a lot of work to do. Um, I did well uh, at the moment, but there's still so much to do. And yeah, I was looking up to him. Eh? He, was, uh, he was a good guy. 
And uh, you've had some other sort of inspirational figures in your career, uh, Tyrone Johns, uh, Travis Govier, Liam Phillips. Um, tell us a bit about them and how they've uh, helped you shape your career to where you are today. Well, um, you see, those guys, uh, those are the very best guys that I've met in my life. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's very, it's when you're lucky when you're meeting the right people and, and the right people that are there to help and do everything they can to, you know, make, make you participate and, 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 and make it fire with your career. So, you know, talking about Travis Guevara and uh, Taron Jones, those are the main people. And if it wasn't for those people, I wouldn't be here today. Um, because they took care of me when I started the sports. Maybe they saw potential and all that. And then, you know, they treated me like family, grew me up and, and taught me the right way, respect, um, giving back to the community and, and just working hard and, you know, um, putting me in the land in a very respectable way and, and growing me perfectly in terms of, you know, um, as, a great, as, as, a, as a growing athlete and a professional athlete and also um, a talented athlete to, you know, work hard and learn to, to be able to talk to people and communicate and, you know, and give back and be out there and, you know, and work as hard as you can. So, you know, I really appreciate having those, those guys in my life. They didn't help me and I will never forget them. Um, yeah, they did a lot. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. And um, Liam Phillips, uh, I did work with them for some, quite some time in Switzerland. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good guy. Eh? We did get along and uh, he helped whenever he can and we had a good relationship. And uh, yeah, I can't complain. Eh? Uh, and you talk about their roles. Um, I mean, especially for sort of individual athletes, things like sponsorship and, and dealing with corporates and and um, you know, that sort of interview requirements is, is quite essential. Um, and I mean, you are incredibly well spoken. Is it something that they gave you confidence in, uh, in yourself? Um, yes, 100%, 100%. You know, um, they always taught me to believe in myself and, and they always uh, made me see that actually I have potential in this. Oh man, I can do it. You know, um, you know, I never, in my mind, there's never been, um, been a lose of hope because I've always had those guys behind me making sure I'm making it into, in, in, you know, I'm making it forward. And, you know, I don't give up halfway and I always, you know, strong mentally and, um, and also they would motivate me and just keep me going. So, you know, that's why I'm saying if it wasn't for those guys, I don't think I would be here today because, you know, having the right people next to you, it's, you know, it's something that you can, you know, hope for and and pray for. So getting that opportunity to meet those guys and be and have the right guys next to me, those are, that was touching and it's amazing. So I'm I'm forever grateful, eh? And McCoy, um, chat to us a bit about the sort of dedication um, required to become a, an athlete at the top of uh, your sport. Um, I mean, you're a young man. It would be quite easy to go out and, and have a good time and party and, and check, see your mates and all that kind of thing. But obviously you need to restrain from an element of that because you've got training to do and you need to dedicate hours. Tell us a bit about from your, your perspective, what it's been like to have to dedicate um, a large portion of your time to having to train. Um, you see, once you have realized, okay, this is what I want to do and this is what I'm good at and this is, this is what I think is going to take me far. It's, it's okay, like I said also, um, you need to know your line. You need to know, okay, as a professional athlete, um, of course I want to see my mates, I want to hang out, I want to party or I want to have fun and, and you know, I can't be held 30, 24 seven, of course, but as a professional athlete, you need to know that's not your life. Your life is, you know, you need to have a, you need to have a consistency. You need to um, train, you need to train, stay clean, you know, diet, um, good food, looking after yourself and, and, you know, getting good sleep. Um, if you want to be the best, you need to act the best, you know? So, you know, you can't just do and, 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 and don't look after yourself. It's very important that you look after yourself and you dedicate yourself and also you motivate yourself because you might say, ah, I'm doing right, but because those guys are not next to you, but in the end of the day, you know, you know, you're not doing right. And they're just going to keep dragging you down and you're just not going to be doing, doing well and participating in the events. So that's why it's very important to dedicate yourself in terms of staying consistency, looking after yourself and act as a professional athlete. So that's why it's very important. 
And that's my, in my perspective, that's what I believe in. And, you know, you don't need somebody to tell you what to do if you know what to do. Because, you know, okay, I need to stay clean. I need to stay healthy. I need to look after my body, you know, communicate with my coach, follow your program, and just get to work and then, you know, move forward. So, uh, no McDonald's burgers allowed then, huh? Nah, nothing. <laughs> Uh, Mankua, you, you mentioned a little bit earlier about Liam Phillips and, and being in Switzerland. You were lucky enough to attend a UCI um, camp uh, at the World Training Center. Tell us a bit about that experience. Um, that was a good experience. So I started going overseas, uh, I think, 2007, when I went there for two weeks as a camp, as a, as a camping. Um, and then, you know, I got selected to come back and stay there for three years and until the Olympics. Unfortunately, I didn't get to that point. Um, you know, a lot happened that side, but that, that was a good experience because going there and training with those guys overseas, I mean, it's, it's something that you can't, you know, it's something that you actually need. It's something that we, we all work hard for as, a, as a, a professional BMX racers. It's just to go overseas and ride with the best of the best, you know. And um, for me, it was a great experience and just to be overseas, uh, work hard. It showed me, you know, it taught me a lot and it showed me that I can make it and that I'm, I'm, I am in that level. So that's the most important thing and gives you confidence that if you know, oh man, I'm, I'm in that level, I'm with those guys, you know, it keeps you going and keeps you motivated. So, yeah, it was, uh, and also working with him. I mean, in, after all, you're working with, the, you know, with a world champion. So it's, it's very important and it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a dream coming true working with those guys, you know, working with somebody that has, has made it somebody that's, you know, uh, want to achieve, have achieved and, you know, that you also want to get in that level that they, that they go to. Um, so it was a great experience and it's something that, you know, something still, uh, still in me, something that I'll never forget. And yeah, it was a, it was a really good experience. I mean, you've had some amazing experiences and some amazing results in your uh, very young fledgling career. Um, mm. Is it the, the third place in Belgium at the European Cup that is the standout for you at this point? Yeah, yeah. Um, there was there was really touching, and also for my country and to go out there, you know, like making it to the finals. It's something that is in BMX. It's it's very important, and it's it's you know it's hard. It's hard to get in that level. So yeah, that's that's uh, so going there and making a podium was was really touching, and uh, you know, was something very big for me. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a memory, yeah, so I'll never forget. And uh, is there a specific country where the best riders come from, or is it very much sort of spread across uh, around the world? Yeah, it's across the world. So you're meeting all the different guys, so they come and then, uh, you know, you guys get along, you live together, you get used to you know each other, and, you, you know, you see each other every day. So basically, we, you know, the riders from uh, Argentina, Belgium, um, uh, Denmark, there's lots and lots of riders and, you know, riders come almost like every month, there are new riders coming or every six months or every three months. So, you know, you get to meet all of those guys and different guys and, you know, learning, learning a lot from different countries, from different people and making friends and communication, you know, because communication is key in the sport. Um, you can't just go there and, you know, and, and be, and don't communicate and don't make friends. So it's all about making friends and, and, and getting to know those guys better. Hundred percent. I mean, they they are your competitors, but uh, certainly friends as well. Um, yeah. The Olympics was obviously supposed to happen this year. Um, it's been postponed till next year. Is that on the cards for you? Yes. So that's that's the main point. That's what I'm working hard for right now to get enough points to so go overseas and do some few races there and work hard and get a slot to go to the Olympics. So that's the main focus for me at the moment. Um, and hopefully things work out for us. And, you know, I'll go there and this pandemic maybe gets to be over in the, in, the, in the end of the year. Then I might, you know, take a flight to Europe and see if I can do some few races there. Um, you know, stay there for a bit and train hard because, you know, like right now, I need to get overseas. I need to get overseas. Therefore, I would be able to train properly and train with the best of the best. I've met a few contacts, so that's the main plan for us. And, um, and yeah, and, and hopefully the best that I get enough points to, you know, to get a slot so I can be selected to, to represent South Africa at the Olympics. And uh, you chat about training and needing to go overseas. Have you managed to um, get sufficient training in during uh, this period? 
Yes, yes, I've been training. I've never stopped. So, you know, in this pandemic, things are hard. It's hard for everybody, but it can't be an excuse. So what I've been doing, I've been running. Um, I'll run for like an hour and a half. That's all I need, of course. And, and doing a lot of sprints, a lot of road sprints, because, because, you know, I was lucky that we can go outside. In some countries, they couldn't even go outside. So, um, yeah, I've been doing sprints and running and uh, doing some home exercises, uh, you know, some planks and stuff like that. And also now things are getting better because now I have access to, to BMX track uh, at Gibber Gorge. So now I can just go to the track and ride as much as I can. Um, you know, I have a good relationship with my coach. He's sending me programs and stuff to do. So, you know, it's all about doing anything, whatever you can, you know, and, and just don't give up. And this, in this pandemic, during this pandemic, things are hard. It's all about staying positive and, and, uh, and staying strong mentally. And um, Nicole, just in closing, um, you've mentioned the Olympics, obviously, uh, next year. What is it um, that you aspire to and dream about um, in terms of your career? Where do you think you can get to? Um, you know, of course, I want to be a world champion. I want to win. I want to, I want to do well. I want to get as much sponsors as I can and, uh, and be a top athlete. And also, going to the Olympics, my biggest goal would be to making at least finals. Okay? If not, but participate as, as much as I can and do, and do my best and go out there and just, you know, and, and be hungry for it. Because that's, 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 it's all about being hungry for it. And then, you know, you don't have to be scared. It's, scared sorry. Once you're there, you're there. You know, there's no turning back. It's all about doing everything you can and, and, and just work hard. Don't be scared and just put yourself out there and make the finals, you know. Um, and if not, but as long as you participate. And, and, for, and for BMX in my career, um, I really see myself making it. So what do I mean by I'm making it? Um, of course, you know, be successful and, and, and make a living out of it, but, um, and be out there, be a top rider, be a top athlete, be known. Um, and yeah, just do as, 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 you know, participate as much as you can during the sports and during the period you got. Well, uh, Tim Kobe, I mean, you, you certainly, um, for a young man, you have a wise head on your shoulders and uh, I'm sure you will get to the top of your game uh, uh, sooner rather than later. Um, it's been brilliant chatting to today on Sport SA Daily Diary. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, good luck with your upcoming training, uh, your travel to Europe, and uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, represent green and gold at the Olympics next year. Yeah, 100%. And thank you so much for having me, Adam. Uh, it's, it's really a pleasure. You know, I had a good time. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get to talk soon. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be posting on my social media, on Instagram, Mangoba128. And uh, yeah, so you guys can get posted there um, and see what's going on. Brilliant. Look forward to it. Take care. Uh. All right. See you too. Uh. Catch us again tomorrow on Sport SA Daily Diary, where we chat to one of South Africa's indoor hockey players who's looking to make a name for herself in the outdoor game.